Welcome everyone to week two of the epic home upgrade journey that I'm taking you guys on. If you missed last week, week one involved a bunch of drywall work and of course a bunch of cleaning and moving out stuff because I had to basically completely empty my garage and put everything on the side yard so they could do a lot of the work in the garage. Pretty much all that last week was electrical work. I have a new sub panel now. They have it set up so I can get a mini split AC installed. I have some switches on the walls that actually work, which I'm very excited about. The main work happening this week is drywall work and that's not just in the garage, it's actually also in two rooms in the house. So Joe is here with me yet again. We have a lot of work to do today because we're gonna be doing, again, a bunch of moving of things. We actually had a day zero again for this week. A bunch of work was done on Sunday to get the computer room initial move out started because there's a couple bookshelves in there that had a bunch of stuff on them. The drywall work is gonna be taking place in the garage over there, but also in two rooms back here, the computer room on that side and our bedroom over here. The bedroom back here is uh, not the tidiest it's ever been, but uh, I wanted to show you guys why we're having drywall work done in here. It's because of these walls. We had this done in the rest of the house, the main area and the kitchen and everything back at the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020. There was just some questionable work done on this house back before we moved in. The stuff like the seams on the ceiling are really not very well done. Drywall is not always secured as properly as it should be, and of course this just crazy, crazy bumpy texture on the walls, which we've really gotten sick of. So they're going to be fixing some of these bad joints and cleaning that up. They're going to be doing a skim coat over all these bumps to make it nice and smooth like it is out in the living room. But because they need to do the drywall work and then they need to paint everything, uh, we're probably going to have a week and a half plus where we can't make use of either the computer room or our bedroom. And so we've been working on relocating our sleeping area out here. We're going to put our mattress there so we have a place to sleep. We've uh, broken the other side of the couch down to a love seat, which my daughter has already been playing on, which is why a bunch of her toys are out here. And because the side yard is already pretty full, uh, we've basically cleared a little bit more space right here so that we could put like some of the table frames and other stuff like that. And of course, our, our bookish corner over there where we've put a couple of our bookshelves. So there's stuff scattered just all over our house right now. We've got a bunch of temporary areas set up for like laundry and other necessity things that we have to do. But the drywall guys are gonna come and start tomorrow. So today we need to make sure that the places they're gonna work are as cleared out as possible. We need to move a little bit more furniture and we need to also clear out the computer room. So hopefully my wife will be finished with her work at some point today. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Tower 200 series cases from Thermaltake, featuring a vertical tower design with a 90 degree rotated motherboard and two pre-installed CT140 fans. The Tower 200 can support huge GPUs, including the RTX 4090 without compromising airflow thanks to an abundance of filtered ventilation panels, and it also supports 280 millimeter AIOs, standard size PSUs, and a sold separately 3.9 inch LCD panel kit to personalize your rig or display useful system stats. It's available in black, snow, or several unique shades of green, so for more on Thermaltake's The Tower 200 series cases, click the sponsor link in the video description. Another day one task was setting up an additional storage area that would eventually become a work area as well on my back patio. That meant digging out my Easy Up, which of course had been buried on the side yard under stuff that was moved out when we cleared the garage the week before. An Easy Up is pretty easy to set up with two people, hence the name, and that gave us a spot to relocate the dressers from the master bedroom, as well as the bed frame eventually. I would have preferred to not store these outside. Outside storage is not the best, but California during this time of the summer is fairly dry. There's not too much weather to speak of, apart from it being hot and it was temporary, and honestly, there was really no room elsewhere in the house at this point to put anything, so we then proceeded to strip the trim in the master bedroom around the doors and the baseboards, which Joe is very skilled at doing. He taught me everything I know about stripping, actually. And we broke down my workstation, at least in the computer room on that day, working very quietly as my wife was on an important business call. Right, we're on day two now. It's already been a crazy morning. Contractors have arrived, but they had to run over to Home Depot. Uh, I sort of cut things off last night because I got really tired, but I still got some work done. Let me update you. So there's where my desk, quote unquote, has been relocated to. So that's where I'll be editing videos and stuff. Here's where a bunch of the other office stuff got relocated to, and I took uh, this 4K monitor from my setup and I put it on the swing arm mount that it's on, and I've got it right here. It's also where the NAS is and our printer, and I've got sort of a little bit of networking set up here so that my wife, if she needs to, can sit down right here with her laptop and get some work done. Temporary sit-stand desk storage. 
living room, which uh, Hannah is making sure stays very chaotic. And our bed has now been moved out here too from our room here. And that's what I'm gonna need to continue doing this morning is finishing cleaning out this room. We got all the trim off except this last strip along the back wall. So I'm gonna be removing that. Got our outdoor uh, dresser drawers out there. So I'm gonna try to get this room ready to go. And also in the computer room, my wife's desk is still here. I think the Xenium Flex is gonna to need to go to the office temporarily. And I still need to pull off a lot of the trim around here too. So plenty of work to be done today. Of course, while I was working diligently on the bedrooms, the drywall crew got to work patching things up in the garage. The drywall crew gave me the okay for filming their work, but they didn't seem overly enthusiastic about the idea, so I tried not to get in their way, and as a result, I have slightly more limited footage of the work that they did. The electrical team the week before left all the drywall cutouts that they made in place in the garage, which allowed the drywall guys to use them for patch and repair work, which I think helped. Meanwhile, I finished clearing my wife's workstation from the computer room and pulled all the trim in there as well, making good use of Joe's stripping advice. It's a good thing I did too, because after the garage was finished, the drywall guys got straight to work on the first layer of skim coat in the master bedroom. There was a lot of mud to apply and I'm very glad that professionals are doing this because they handled it way faster than I expected. Okay, so it's actually the next day now. They were here till like 7 p.m. last night or almost seven. And I actually brought in a couple more guys towards the end of the job, just so they could finish it all off in one day, or at least finish off this first skim coat. And it's, it's of course so perfectly uniform that I'm having trouble even getting focus on it, but over here is probably a little bit better. You can still see some of the bumps from the texture underneath, uh, but that's why they're doing two coats, but we need to wait at least like two days for this to dry before they can do the next coat, which is why we got a fan going, circulate some air. And here's a look at our bedroom, which has also gotten the same treatment. And like, we had the, we've had this spot on the ceiling up here that had this very evident seam that had actually cracked at some point that we're so glad it is finally covered. So, with a bit of ventilation and a bit of time, we'll move on to day two of this, which is gonna be a couple days from now on Friday. We can still use our bathroom, thankfully, and um, the, the carpets, by the way, we're not planning to keep. We're gonna, we're gonna tear them up because you might be able to tell how dirty this one has become over the years. That's also why I told them that, you know, the carpets weren't a big deal if they got you know, some of the drywall mud on them, which they definitely did. Oh, hello, Wednesday. Have you guys met Wednesday? This is Joe's dog, and Wednesday is visiting as well as Joe. Because today, there isn't any work being done by contractors, but we are having a miscellaneous day. Miscellaneous day means we have way too much stuff out here. I should say I. I have way too much stuff out here that needs to be sorted a bit more properly. I need to get some high value items tucked away and stored a bit more securely. And we also have a VVA pickup of veterans. They pick up household goods and stuff like that and the proceeds go to veterans. Uh, so they're coming by today and we're doing stuff like Hana's stroller. Hana's stroller that we use for so long, but we don't use it anymore. It's such a good stroller. Kind of sad, but it's going to VVA pickup. We've received approval for another item for VVA pickup. Look, it's an Instant Pot that we got, I think, I think this, was it a wedding gift? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's been unused for a really long time. We decided we're probably not gonna use it, so it's going out too. A glorious pile of things out here that aren't gonna be in our garage or backyard anymore. Happy about that. One thing I definitely have way too many of, when it comes to PC hardware, fans. See, I love all my fans, and I don't want to lose any of them. That's why, that's why there are so many, as we are extricating from this, this okay. bag right here. Fortunately, what's coming up soon, a fan meetup. So we're gonna bring the fans to the fan meetup, and that's gonna be very appropriate. I'm sure we'll find homes for all of these. Right, Joe? <laughs> any more dad jokes? Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> also on day three, the Bagster pickup came, arriving bright and early before I even realized it, so I just have my security camera footage of that happening. I was planning to pull that Bagster bag down closer to the curb for the pickup, but they showed up at like 6.45 a.m. By the time I realized it, the Bagster was gone. But that takes us into day four and five. On day four, the drywall team applied the second skim coat to the walls in the master bedroom, and then the computer room too, and then they also did the sanding in the master bedroom since the mud they used for the second coat dries faster, so by the time they did the computer room, it was dry enough to sand in there. The drywall crew just left. This is uh, the end of their work on day two. 
And yes, they're still a mess because they're coming back tomorrow to do one last pass for sanding. And here are the walls now. Don't they look, don't they look lovely? Don't they look glorious? Maybe over here you can get a good view. See? See, it's smooth. That's the whole point. Smooth walls, not bumpy walls. Bumpy walls suck. Likewise here in the bedroom. Doors open so stuff can dry. Nice, clean, smooth walls. Oh, it's lovely, it's glorious. Oh, I guess they didn't take the register off. That's okay, it's part of the wall now. There were a few other misses by the drywall guys along with that mudded in register, unfortunately. And I would have gladly removed the registers, wall panels, and all that stuff if I had known they weren't going to. But by the time I realized it was a little bit too late. And there will be a little bit more on that in next week's video, which includes the painting. But the drywall guys came back on the final day to sand the computer room, which I didn't get any footage of because it's really hard to go into a room where three or four people are working, mudding or sanding, and poke your head in there with a camera. What I did get footage of was myself doing a very amateur job at some drywall work of my own. I patched up the last outlet out here in the garage, which they were supposed to cover over, but they didn't. And by the time I realized it and asked them, they said they were out of time, but ultimately it got done and all was ready for the next phase. And I hope you are ready for the next phase too, because that will be coming next week. And like I said, includes painting and a bunch of other stuff. But I do wanna say a big thank you to everyone who watched last week's video, the part one, and this one too for that matter, and for all the positive feedback, thumbs ups, and all that good stuff. As of now, this is looking like it will probably be a five or six part series. I'm gonna to try to keep them going once a week. And while these first parts are covering stuff that happened back in late June, we're gonna be catching up back to real time fairly quickly. And since there's still work to be done, I will be checking on how things go as the series progresses to decide if I'll continue with regular updates on my progress, getting my work Space all sorted out and set up properly. But that's all for this one. Closing reminder to check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.